Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. 
significant religious festival and has become a cultural festival and its roots lie in the great um, bliss and ecstasy of the residents of Ayodhya who are welcoming their beloved Lord, Lord Ram back home after many years of separation and they lit up lamps all throughout the create a very festive mood to welcome Lord Ram back into Ayodhya. So in, in the tradition of laying lamps in the home, it is meant as an indication that we are also ready to welcome the Supreme Lord into our hearts. And we are uh, illuminating our hearts with the very sweet and most beloved Lord Sri Krishna into our hearts. So this is the wonderful celebration. So I wish everyone a very uh, wonderful opportunity to welcome the Supreme Lord into our hearts. Of course, he is always there sitting as Paramatma. But the question is, have we still welcomed him? <laughs> have we acknowledged his presence and understood that he is staying right near us? eager to guide us on the path of devotional service. So, this is a very um, important day. Today is the day that Krishna
Krishna performed his most famous Dhamma which was performed on this Diwali day. And it's very connected to this pastime of Govardhan Puja. So Govardhan Puja is an extraordinarily important festival for all of us to observe for many reasons. Um, Krishna himself inaugurated this Govardhan Puja. Most other sacrifices, they come through Shastra. But this specific Puja, you will not find anywhere in our Vedas. But Krishna instructed his father, Nanda Baba, and all the Kaurya exactly how to perform this Govardhan Puja and then perform it. And so this description is given in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto, chapters 24, 25, and 26. Um, so we'll read one verse today from Srimad Bhagavatam and then we'll discuss um, this glorious pastime and uh, the importance of observing Govardhan Puja, what it means, and also some very instructive lessons for us um, from this uh, very important time. Um, for me personally, Govardhan Puja is the most, most important because our family deities um, arrived uh, from Govardhan Puja, and thus they have been named by my mother and father, Shishi Radha Gidhidhan. trying to serve, um, they appear um, from Govardhan Puja. So very, very um, important to me and my family as well. So we'll read from hmm, I was thinking between two verses. We'll read um, Canto 10, chapter 25, verse number 19. Iti uplektena hastena kritva govardhan achalam jaddara lilaya vishnus chatrakam iva balaka. Translation and purport by his divine grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki. Having said this, Lord Krishna, who is Vishnu himself, picked up Govardhan Hill with one hand and held it aloft just as easily as a child holds up a mushroom. Purport. It is confirmed in the Hari Vamsha that Sri Krishna picked up the Govardhan mountain with his left hand. Sadhvita Sangato Megirgiri Savena Pandina. With his left hand, he picked up that mountain which was touching the clouds. According to Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, when Lord Krishna was preparing to lift Govardhan Hill, a partial expansion of his Yoga Maya potency, named Samhari, temporarily removed all the rain from the sky, so that as he ran very swiftly from the porch of his house to the mountain, neither his turban nor other garments became wet. Om Gyanati Randasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Mirikam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishram Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dirati Swapadatikam Vandeyam Shri Guru Shri Uta Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnamamsha Shri Rupam Sagaratam Sagaratam Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parigana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Sham He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Tatatan 
So, this Govardhan Puja, very, very uh, widely celebrated. Today, still millions and millions of residents of Vrindavan will um, celebrate Govardhan Puja very elaborately. Uh, on this day, all the residents will dress up very fancifully and perform parikram, um, do so many different um, activities. And primarily, we understand they have a giant Anukut mountain of different voga offerings for the supreme lord and um, Srila Prabhupada by his unlimited mercy brought to all of us this opportunity to celebrate Govardhan Puja um, in a very exquisite way um, and so we are very fortunate to be able to understand its importance uh, at the end of this pastime Krishna says one cannot be happy in life without observing Govardhan Puja. So this is, yes. And shall I tell you what he says next? <laughs> he says, if you do not observe Govardhan Puja, one will become bitten by the black snakes that live on Govardhan Hill, and you will die. <laughs> so Krishna is emphatically encouraging us. So let us understand the history First, Govardhan. So Govardhan um, is no ordinary mountain. It is coming directly from the spiritual world. Govardhan resides eternally in Goloka Vrindavan. And when Krishna is, says that he's coming to the material world, Radharani says, good luck, enjoy, I'm not coming. And, and Krishna says, why? I'll not go. Where there is no Govardhan, where there is no Yamuna, where there is no Vrindavan. Krishna says, okay, I'll manifest all of them in the material world. Now you'll come, okay. And she agrees. So, Govardhan descends from the spiritual world. And how it reaches Vrindavan is a whole story. I'll just give a quick synopsis, but just to get to the main part of the story, but Govardhan actually was, was residing in the mountain region and he was the son of Dronachal. And there once uh, Pulaske Muni came uh, from Kasi and Pulaske Muni was really in awe of the beauty of Govardhan, as everyone was. Anyone who saw Govardhan were just stunned. Nothing like anything in the world has been seen as beautiful. So, Pulaski Muni being a great Rishi, he, you know, asked and begged, let me take Govardhan with me to Kashi. Kashi is very flat, and they're having some mountain, will be very nice, and all the great sages that have assembled there will be pleased, and thus will be serving, you know, the devotees. So, in this way, uh, Pulaski Muni um, um, uh, was able to Convince Dronachal to release Govardhan to him. And so, but, but uh, Dronachal said, How will you take him? I am a great Muni. I'll just lift up and carry. Okay. So, uh, Govardhan said, Okay, I'll go with you, but on one condition. Wherever you put me, I'll not move from there. I'll not move from that spot. So, um, Pulasamir says, No problem. I'm very strong. I won't have to rest anywhere between here and Kashi, not too far. Let's go. So he lifts Govardhan 
and is, be, is flying here in the air. And as they're flying over, they come to the land of Vrindavan. And Govardhan is struck. Oh, how beautiful the land of Vrindavan is. Here I can stay. So Govardhan became very, very heavy. And Tulasya Muni became a little bit tired. And also, he had to, have to answer nature's call. So he forgot. So he said, okay, let me just take a rest here for a minute. So he puts Govardhan down right in Vrindavan. And you know, takes care of his business. And he comes back and he goes to live. It won't budge. It won't budge. Now the was to say, what? He goes, I told you, wherever you put me down, I'll stay. And so Pulasimuni became very upset. And he cursed over them. He said, You will lose your great height and mass by the amount of one mustard seed every so, actually, Govardhan is slowly, by this amount of one mustard seed, shrinking and going into the earth. Actually, by the next, after the 10,000 years of the golden era, uh, pre, uh, following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's arrival, Govardhan will be gone. It will be fully submerged within the earth. And at that point, the real Kali Yuga will begin. And all of Spiritual practices will become very, very difficult. Um, in addition to losing Govardhan, we'll lose all the holy rivers. Uh, then the real Kali, right now this is not real Kali, we're thinking, wow, so difficult, COVID is running wild, so many difficulties. This is this is not even real Kali Yuga because of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Govardhan uh, established his presence and residence in Sri Rana. And there uh, was uh, the center point of so many activities of the residents of Vrindavan. So one day, um, Krishna and Balaram, after um, um, you know, pacifying the wives of the Brahmanas, very sweet pastime, um, they saw that Nanda Maharaj and the elderly cowherd men were just nearby there. And they were preparing for some sacrifice. Krishna is seven years old at this time, so he's still a young boy. And so Krishna um, goes and asks uh, Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Maharaj, Baba, what are you doing here? What is this sacrifice? What is its purpose? Where it came from? What is its origin? So many questions he's asking. Like, you know, most young boys, they ask lots of questions. So Nanda Maharaj didn't, uh, you know, pay so much attention you know, and continued on preparing for this big uh, puja. And Krishna was not going to read. He said, he said, it is not good to keep secrets among pious people, among family members. And he gave all good, heavy philosophy on why uh, Nanda Maharaj should explain why he is doing it. You know what purpose you are doing this. And Krishna is teaching us that doing rituals should be done understanding what is the purpose of those rituals. We should not just do blindly, but we should understand uh, what is the purpose of such rituals. So, Nanda Maharaj finally explained, My dear Krishna, we are performing a puja to Lord Indra. Lord Indra is providing all the rains for us, and we know, no matter how much wealth you have, no matter how much facilities you have, if you don't have rain, you'll not have foodstuff. And without foodstuffs, you have no life. So we are dependent on Lord Indra. And thus, because he is showering such wonderful rains, we are offering him a great puja, sacrifice, uh, for his pleasure. So now Krishna begins to perform a series of activities. And one of the great benedictions and blessings that Krishna does is he always protects his devotees. Now sometimes this protection comes in the form of a wake-up call. But that is also our greatest blessing. So Krishna knows, he is all-knowing, he is omniscient. 
he knows that Lord Indra has become very proud of his position, being the king of heavens and having you know, the control over this reigns. So Indra is feeling very proud. So Krishna is going to defeat Lord Indra's pride. Now when we see this, initially we think, wow, you know, Krishna is really attacking Lord Indra. And then Lord Indra is going to try to attack Krishna. But again, Krishna is always protecting his devotees. Because he knows when there is pride in the heart, bhakti cannot manifest. Bhakti cannot prosper. Pride is like weeds in a garden. It will overtake the desired crop. So, we must be very mindful how not to let pride enter into the heart. And if it enters, we should pray to Krishna. Krishna, please destroy my pride as swiftly and cleverly as you did for the great Lord Indra. Because as we'll see, Krishna is really going to uh, destroy the pride of Lord Indra. But remember, for whose benefit is Krishna destroying this pride? For Lord Indra and for all of us. It is our blessing only. So that we must keep center mind as we hear, because Krishna is going to go really far. So Krishna decides that he is going to stop this sacrifice. Don't worship Lord Indra. Now, Krishna could have said, don't worship Lord Indra, worship the Supreme Lord. But in doing so, Lord Indra would have little to argue about in that regard, right? So Krishna actually he begins to discuss why they should not um, worship Lord Indra on a, actually a kind of an atheistic philosophy, this karma mimamsa philosophy. Krishna says, you don't have to worship Lord Indra for rains. Nature will provide according to your karma. You do your activities and nature is forced to give you the different things for your subsistence. So you just do good. There is no need to worship Lord Indra. Look, he's giving rains in the oceans. Oceans are doing any type of yajna. He's giving rains everywhere. So don't, you have no need to worship. You just do your duty. So he was, again, explaining this, you know, uh, this karma mimamsa philosophy, which is not, it is bogus, it is, it is atheistic. Srila Prabhupada explains that we see that just doing our effort is not sufficient for the result. There's still some higher being that decides. And he gives the example. The expert physician will try to save the sick person with all the best available remedies. But still, sometimes that effort is met with failure. So ultimately, Krishna is in control. So this idea that just nature will provide according to your duties based on your karma. Yes, it will be based on karma, but we must understand who is the superintendent of that whole system, and that is Krishna. So Krishna is telling them the Maharaj, you just give up this worship. And instead, we are Vaishyas. We are in the business of agriculture, cow protection. And we are being maintained by the great Govardhan. The waters coming off of Govardhan are coming with so many nutrients that when they come and enter our fields, fertile crops grow. Our cows are being nourished by the great grasses residing on Govardhan. We are pulling flowers and using them in the different offerings and sacrifices we are doing. It is a place for leisure and play. So everything we are, uh, our whole existence is being supported by Govardhan. So let us worship Govardhan. Now you can imagine Lord Indra's emotion. He's telling you to worship a pile of rocks? A mountain? And not me? You can see Krishna is going deep to try to break this pride. So... Nanda Maharaj says, okay, you want to worship Govardhan, 
Krishna says we should worship Govardhan, the cows and the brahmins. You know, Krishna's Go Brahman Hita. He is the protector, Hita, of Go, cows, and the brahmins. So, Nanama said, okay, no problem. We'll do your puja tomorrow. Let us finish this puja. And Krishna says, no, 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 no. This Govardhan puja requires great planning and so much boga and facilities. Will you take all what you have now and let us go and prepare for Govardhan puja? So Krishna was not going to be um, uh, uh, said no to. So in this way, Nanda Maharaj finally acquiesces and says, okay, okay, fine. Let us go. And what do we have to do? So Krishna explained, you take all this boga and you cook huge amounts of sweet rice, dal, sabji, puris, pakora, hopefully everybody had dinner in the army. Um, samosas, I mean, raskulas, mountains and mountains, giant amounts. We empty the storerooms and we make huge amounts of offerings and we'll make a, anupuk, a mountain of offerings right at the base of Govardhan. And we'll call some brahmanas. They will chant some very important Vedic mantras. And then you'll give uh, some charity to these brahmanas. Give them some nicely decorated cows. You feed them sumptuous prasad. And then after feeding the brahmanas and giving them some charity, you will then give prasad to all the living entities, even the dogs and cats, and even the low-class people, everybody should be sumptuously fed and taken care of. Krishna is showing everyone is deserving of the love of Krishna. So, like this, they instruct him. So, Nanda Maharaj and all the residents of Vrindavan went to Govardhan, and they performed this um, puja in this way. And after performing the puja, they um, uh, went on parikram. So Krishna himself is the one who inaugurated this Govardhan parikram. Still to this day, every year, millions and millions of uh, devotees perform Govardhan parikram. And who inaugurated that? Krishna. He took his whole family and all his friends and all the residents of Vrindavan. And so they had the cows and the brahmanas in front. And all the residents followed. Everybody dressed up in their finest clothes. The ladies were sitting at top bullock carts. And like this, they performed Parikrama. Now, Govardhan at this time was 64 miles long. It was 40 miles wide. And 16 miles high. It was 8 yojans by 5 by 2. So it's quite a party kind of. And after very much enjoying and they were singing and dancing and remembering all the pastimes of Krishna, they returned back to where they started. And Krishna knowing that still there may be some doubt about this Govardha. So he then, Krishna himself, assumes the form of Govardha and begins to eat all of the offerings. But Krishna is seated here too. And he's saying, look, Govardhan is eating all of our offerings. Haribo, how wonderful. <laughs> of course, it was only he who was eating them. And then Krishna offers obeisances. And then all the residents follow and offer obeisances. And in this way, Krishna proved that he is non-different from Govardhan. Still today, you know, devotees will worship these Govardhan chinas. They are non-different from Krishna. Which is why when we go to Govardhan, we should be very careful not to step onto Govardhan. Uh, we be very careful to be always on the footpath, but never inside. And so because it is non-different from Krishna. Krishna himself showed by taking all of the offerings and eating them. So in this way, um, the Govardhan Puja concluded and um, everybody went home and everybody was very happy except for Lord Indra. Lord Indra became very upset. 
This is a function of pride. When we have pride in the heart, when we don't get what we want, we don't receive the respect we think we deserve, we become very angry. And in anger, we do things we will always later regret. Always. So in Gorindra, he got very angry. This Nanda Baba and Yahweh, they have lost all righteousness. They are so foolish. They have taken the advice of this talkative young boy, Krishna. Don't they know who I am? Don't they know? If they don't, I'll show them. And when pride is in the heart, we take to revenge to those who do not treat us as we think we deserve. So, Lord Indra, the great Lord Indra, becomes revengeful. And so he calls the Subvertica clouds. These are the clouds that come at the devastation of the universe. And they flood the lands. And they're wondering, why are we being called now? It's not time. And Lord Indra explains, you go to Vrindavan and you flood all of Raj. And I want you to kill the cows. That is the lifeline for all the residents of Vrindavan. So you can see how deep, when pride is out, one loses all intelligence. This is what happens with pride. So Lord Indra became very um, angry, frustrated. He called for these clouds. Now the clouds thought, they hesitated. This is not right. We cannot do this. And, and Lord Indra, don't worry, I'm coming also. And I'll be there along the way. Let's go. So they, he pushed. He said, no, we'll go. So then, all of a sudden, dark, dark clouds came over Vrindavan. Unseasonal. Heavy, heavy rain started to pour. How heavy? In, in, uh, in the Srimad Bhagavad, they say, like pillars of rain were falling. Giant columns, such heavy rain, ice, lightning. Everyone was becoming fearful. So much water was coming, which they could not see a high land and low land. Everything was just becoming submerged. And in a very fearful state, what did all the residents of Vrindavan do? Who do they go to every time there is some disturbance, some uh, fear? Krishna. Krishna, save us! And so they ran to Krishna. This is very instructive for us. We may run into different circumstances in our material world, but who can really save us from whatever we are Encountered it is only Krishna. The residents of Vrindavan knew it. No matter what disturbance came, they didn't think, "Oh, we can handle it." No, let us just go to Krishna. He is our ultimate savior. So they went to Krishna. And Krishna knew what was happening. So he said, "No problem." Now we have to take a pause. You may wonder. How is it that heavy rains and fearful conditions and you know hailstorms and giant flooding could enter Goloka Vrindavan? It's a place of perfection. Why Krishna didn't protect? He simply could have called Ananda Shesh to come over and all the rains would have been blocked. Why? Why he didn't do that? And they wonder how there can be. Um, fear and anxiety and so I thought this was a life mutta. Yeah. No anxiety. Well, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur comments that in the spiritual world this experience of upheaval is the fuel to intensify the love for Krishna. And he gives the example. Like when one is very hungry and suffering from hunger pains then the enjoyment of eating is intensified. 
So the hunger pains is a means to intensify the pleasure of eating. So similarly, sometimes these experiences of fear or disturbances among the residents of Vrindavan, it was, it was the means to fuel a deeper and more stronger attraction and surrender to Krishna. So this is a very transcendental process. And then we'll see in our own process of spiritual life, yeah, there'll be some disturbances, some challenges. Srila Prabhupada faced so many unthinkable challenges. But it only served to inspire him to surrender even more deeply to the beloved Supreme Personality of God. And this is what we see um, in Goloka Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, here in this um, material world, what this pastime is taking place. So Krishna said, okay, no problem. And he went to Govardhan. And as we read in this verse, as he was going from his house to Govardhan, not even one drop of rain could sit into his turban. The giant winds that were swirling couldn't move one jewel from his turban, nor any of his clothes were wet. Because of course, nothing can touch Krishna unless he wants it to. So Krishna went and lifted Govardhan Hill. And how much trouble did he have to go and lift? Left hand, left finger, small finger, not even the finger, on the fingernail. 64 mile long, 40 mile wide, 16 mile high mountain. On the fingernail of Krishna. Now, Krishna could have just what did one thing and some particle would fly. He did Why he lifted Govardhan? Why he went to that effort? Because Krishna is always fulfilling the desires of his devotees. So in Krishna's activities, he does many things to fulfill many different pastimes, many different purposes. He is multi-purposed in his activities. So this activity was not only destroying the pride of Lord Indra, out of love and compassion for him, but also reciprocating with his devotees' deepest desires. So what was the desire of the residents of Vrindavan? The desire is that everybody in Vrindavan was always lamenting that they get to enjoy with Krishna, but then it has to come to an end. Mother Yashoda gets to wake up Krishna, you know, massage him, bathe him, dress him, feed him. But while all these activities are going, all the coward boys are banging on the windows, come on Krishna, come on Krishna, we have to play. And Mother Yashoda is, you know, dressing him, oh no, this doesn't look good, takes off those clothes, puts another set of clothes, no, no, this doesn't look good. Well, just a delay and stall tactic so she can enjoy with Krishna more. But she knows, ultimately, she has to let Krishna go. And then she is lamenting. And the coward boys are all excited and ecstatic. Yes, we get to play with Krishna. But then, by the time evening comes, they know we have to go back. And Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj are happy. They get Krishna back. And then in the evening, you would you know, hang out, play with the, with the gopis. And then, so everybody was trading off Krishna. And they all said, we want uninterrupted time with Krishna. So Krishna said, okay. So in this pastime, he could have very easily uh, sent some vertical flying. He could have brought the Nantashesh and stopped all the rains. But to fulfill the desire of his devotees, he picked up Govardhan. And he invited all the residents of Vrindavan to come underneath and take shelter. Now, if somebody is holding a rock, will you stand underneath that rock? All the rest of Vrindavan just went in. 
He said, don't worry, it won't fall. 64 mile mountain. Our fear would be Japan. That would be our fear. But they had faith in Krishna. They had full faith in Krishna. That he is always protected. He'll never instruct, guide us wrong. So he wants us to come underneath this mountain that's balancing on his left fingernail? No problem. Let us go. Let us go. And here, for seven days, all the residents of Vrindavan had uninterrupted darshan of Krishna. There was no going home at night. There was no going home in the morning. No, no. Seven days and seven nights. Now, we can wonder, wait, one mountain, how a whole city could fit under? This is the transcendental mystic potency of Krishna. Everybody was situated. But it's even more mystical than that. So Krishna was standing in the middle of Govardhan. Right? And it says like he was standing on like a platform. Now if you were standing in the middle and you brought all the people underneath the mountain, some will have a very back seat, some will have a front seat. Right? Some will be seeing Krishna from the front, some from the sides, and like this. Right? But mystically, everybody was having an upfront, face to face, personal darshan of Krishna. Because Krishna reciprocates with everyone completely, He is unlimited. And so everybody was experiencing first hand, front, front row darshan of Krishna. Seven days and seven nights. And they were so enamored and captivated by Krishna's beauty. They could not take their eyes for one second anywhere else. There was no thought of hunger, sleepiness, my foot is falling asleep, my back hurts. No, they just were drinking the beauty of Krishna. And each moment that passed, they got a new and deeper experience of Krishna's beauty. Seven days, seven nights. And still, they wanted more. This is how unlimitedly beautiful Krishna is. And all the resident of Vrindavan, they had their deepest desire fulfilled. Of course, Krishna could have protected in so many ways. But he did so in a way that made also the devotees very happy. Because he gave them what they were desiring. Uninterrupted association with Krishna. And so after seven days, you know, why seven days? Just to give this reciprocation to his devotees. And one may wonder, well, if it kept raining and raining like this, how the, it did flood, right? The waters would have flooded into the mountain. Acharya's comment. That when it started to rain, when Krishna lifted Govardhan, every drop of rain that hit the ground immediately evaporated. So Vertica was jumping and dumping rain, but not one drop was accumulated. Wild, wild winds were coming, but not even a single petal from a flower on Govardhan was disturbed or displaced. Not even one petal moved. So despite all the efforts, it was not there. Nothing can go against the will of Krishna. Nothing can go against the will of Krishna. And so, after seven days, Sambhartaka left. Lord Indra decided this is not going to work. And Krishna seeing that the, the skies had opened up, Everything is now safe. He said, okay, you all can go now. And Krishna put back over them exactly where it was. Not one stone was moved. Now Acharya is coming. <clears throat> Another reason Krishna picked up over them. When um, they were building the bridge to Lanka, 
Ariel army was finding big, big stones and boulders and, and trees to build this bridge. And Lord Hanumanji had reached Govardhan and he saw this giant mountain. Now this will be perfect for Lord Ram's journey to Lanka. And Govardhan was ecstatic. Yes, Lord Ram will walk on me. But as soon as Anumanji went to pick up, the signal came, the WhatsApp message came. The bridge is done. No more stones are needed. No more mountains are needed. And so Govardhan was devastated. Oh, my opportunity to serve my beloved Lord was dissipated. So Krishna said, don't worry. When I come in my pastime, I will lift you and you will be used in the service of all the devotees of mine. And so this is one of the reasons he specifically lifted Govardhan uh, to also fulfill the desire of Gaya. So like this, Krishna's activities are multi multifaceted. So after the activities, you know, Lord Indra became very embarrassed about his activities. And Krishna went to meet him. And it's explained, in a secluded place. You know, Krishna did not want to embarrass Lord Indra. Um, and so they met in a secluded place, right at the base of Govardhan. And there, Lord Brahma had guided Indra, you go and you take Surabhi, you know, Krishna's very dear cow, and you do Abhishek of Krishna, and you beg for forgiveness. And so, uh, Lord Indra uh, performs, you know, great, um, um, he offers obeisances and offers many, many wonderful prayers. And he acknowledges how he forgot his position and how he had, you know, mistaken his understanding of who was his ultimate master. And he um, begs for forgiveness and expresses gratitude to Krishna for correcting his ways. And in this way, he then performs Abhishek and that um, um, Abhishek Kun is still the Govind Kun at uh, Govardhan. You can go and there you can sprinkle that water. That water is coming from the Abhishek that uh, Lord Indra performed um, in serving Krishna. And so, in this way, um, uh, Lord, uh, Lord Indra's pride was crushed and curbed. And that is the greatest of blessings we all can reach, all can achieve. This is not a, um, a pastime of, of criticizing, um, uh, but this is actually a pastime of showing how Krishna Paritra Naya Sadhanam is always protecting his devotees. Sometimes that protection comes in the form of a you know slightly stiff lesson. But the stiff lesson is only due to the severely um, uh, planted anarthas within our heart. So we pray to Krishna. Krishna, you also please you know, help me rid myself of this pride. Because we know pride is a complete obstacle in the devotional service. So that is the first you know, very important you know, message we get in this pastime. We get the important message that Krishna, he is the root of the tree. As, as Krishna has explained in the Bhagavad Gita, there is no need to worship anyone else. Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Prikeja Maam Ekam. Just surrender unto me. No need for any other worship. I am the source of everything. And by worshiping me, everything will be satisfied. And three, Krishna is our only shelter. Whenever we face difficulties, dangers in the world, Krishna is our shelter. As the residents of Vrindavan, when they experienced the torrential rains, they ran to Krishna. Now out of four. Krishna is always eager to reciprocate with his devotees, fulfilling their desires, giving them unlimited darshan, and showing how he maintains a very personal relationship with all of his devotees. 
So in this way, we saw the observation of Govind and Puja being very, very important. And so tomorrow, we'll have an opportunity to uh, do Govind and Parikram by strambulating the Anukut Hill four times. It is equivalent to doing Govind and Parikram. Very, very powerful, very potent. So you come, experience, and uh, take blessings, Sri Sri Ramakin Vihai, on their appearance day, and um, we can celebrate this most wonderful Govardhan Puja and the lifting of Govardhan Hill um, in, in most blissful way. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jaya Nantakoti Vaishnavinda. Questions or comments? That is, uh, that is a very nice question. So, you know, how he did not know, and this is what happens um, when we become prideful, we sometimes forget the very obvious. Uh, you know, he's seeing Krishna as just a child. He's not seeing him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that is why Krishna, Krishna could have told Nanda Baba, you just serve, you know, Lord Vishnu. And Lord Indra would have had no like issue, right? He would have had no problem. So Krishna took the, the specific route because that would not have curbed his pride. Okay? But when there's pride in the heart, it blocks, it blinds our intelligence. We think I am great, even greater than Krishna. So he, and that's what he laments. In the next chapter, uh, well, the next chapter is, is a very beautiful chapter called uh, Wonderful Krishna. Uh, we didn't have time to discuss that, but after the residents leave, they are awestruck. They say, wait a minute, what just happened? A seven-year-old boy lived to this mountain for seven days? Nanda Baba, who is your son? How old? Who would come clean? Yeah, we have seen him take down Putana and Tanarvata and Shakatasura and all, but this is too much. Who is he? So that chapter is there, very sweet chapter, uh, chapter 26. But in 27, Lord Indra offers his prayers. And there he acknowledges, I miss understanding. You are the supreme controller of everything. You are my worshipable master. And I missed it. So we have to we understand that this is if the great Lord Indra can succumb to that, what about us? Right? What about us? We have so, no hope for Pujita. <laughs> we have hope. But we should understand the we have hope. And that hope is taking to the shelter of the holy names. By chanting the holy names and taking to the lotus feet of a spiritual master. One is protected from this deviation. When one works under guidance of Guru, then there is no potential for deviations. When one takes the orders of the spiritual master as one's life and soul, then one is protected. But when one begins to act under their own understanding, there lies the potential to become bewildered. So our hope is not in our ability to understand. Our hope is in receiving the mercy of the spiritual master who will protect us 
through our mood of surrender from making these sorts of mistakes. Uh, Prabhuji, one more request. Like, uh, in the past, it, uh, you were saying that uh, you will have one day a session on yes. Sharnagati. Sharnagati, yes, Sharnagati. Yes. Thank you for that, Prabhuji. We'll do it as soon as Karthik is over. We have one more week of pastimes to discuss, and then we will do it. Yes, thank you for reminding me. So I am, the, I am the source of remembrance and forgetfulness. But, but Krishna is not the cause of our forgetfulness. So Krishna reciprocates with our desire. So this was not Krishna wanted Lord Indra to forget and to perform this pastime. No. This was the position that Lord Indra became prideful. And so to, again, out of love, to correct that, to protect him, is a means of protection, not chastisement. It is protection. Krishna performed this. But Krishna did not cause Lord Indra to forget. But when the, when the living entity wants to forget Krishna, then Krishna facilitates that. So when he says, I am the cause of remembrance and forgetfulness and knowledge, it is in reciprocation to the desire of the devotee. Because some will say, oh, you know, Krishna is destined to be a sinner, so I'm a sinful person. No, no, Krishna is not destined anywhere. But if you desire to be, he'll give you knowledge on how to perform sinful life. Because that also requires knowledge. Right? And it also remember, requires forgetfulness of who I am as part and parcel. So that is your desire. Okay, I'll help. But Krishna doesn't force forgetfulness upon us. It is always in reciprocation to the desire. So if we want to always remember Krishna, we have to pray to Krishna. Krishna, don't ever let me forget you. So that's a very important point you're raising. Um, that it is always in reciprocity. We are always the source or the cause, the responsible party. That's always important for us to remember. Uh, Prabhupada, I have one more question. Uh, yes. Okay, if my doubts are regarding this uh, Bhagavan, and the devotee now does not have Thank you. 
Krishna reciprocates according to the degree of our surrender. So we have to do our part. We have to put in our... It will not happen just mechanically. Um, it is not a mechanical, if I hear all the Srimad Bhagavatam, I'll become liberated. Um, because hearing and realizing are two different things. We can hear so many things, but have we realized it? Meaning, has it turned into action? That is vigyama. So hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, there should be one exclusive result, pure bhakti, the practice of pure devotional service. Then of course, by practicing pure bhakti, liberation will happen. But by just the mechanical hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam, it may not happen. You have to hear from a bona fide source. There are many, you know, recitations. But we must hear Srila Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam. Because I really know that is a coming in Guru Parampara. Right? So, but the, the hearing must result in a change in consciousness. Otherwise, it's simply entertainment. Right? So, that, um, and today, and, and if it does, then of course the result would be liberation. But remember also, liberation is not a geographic destination, going back to the spiritual world. Liberation means to become free from the clutches of material nature. So one can be in a liberated state even within the material world. Free from all the allurements of the material world. So, when we think about liberation, think about it more in the context of how I can become free from the material attachment, material awareness. Right? And because that can happen even within this body. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that one at once can cross beyond the ocean of Maya. At once. By surrendering to Him. So, that's what liberation is, right? And ultimately, the pure devotee doesn't even desire liberation from to go back to spiritual world, right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Mama Janmani, Janmani Shalei, Bhakta Bhakti Ahiti Ki Toy. That birth after birth, I don't care. Just make me your servant. Don't ever let me stop being able to render service to you, no matter where I am. In the Goloka Rindavan or in the hellish planet, just please give me the privilege of devotional service. And we pray to Srimad Tikosi Maharani every day, give me the privilege of devotional service. Right, so the, ultimately, the, in the pure bhakti, one is simply desiring that. Let me be your servant. Wherever you want me, wherever you desire, decide is best for me. I'm okay. Now that's a high platform. Yeah. <laughs> that's a high platform. What made me after at least Gokarnath Shah himself is a pure devotee of Krishna. So uh, he's now getting a chance to go to it. But then uh, what about us? <laughs> so that makes me afraid of him. Uh, what, what, what about you? What about us? Last week we discussed Radha Kun. Great, great personalities cannot go to Radha Kun. Narada Muni cannot go to Nar uh, Radha Kun. How we can go there? How is possible? 
is only by Mahavadanaya, mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is made this highest platform of bhakti available to us. And that is why we actually have no qualification to even understand some of these highest platforms where great, great personalities cannot. But it is not due to something we did. It is due to the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And who brought Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy to us? Srila Prabhupada. And ultimately, Guru Maharaj. This Guru Parampara is our qualification. That is it. We have no other qualification. We have no other hope, actually. But if we surrender to Srila Prabhupada, He'll make it happen. So yes, we can wonder, wow, these great personalities cannot. What about me? That actually makes us hold on to this lifeline stronger. Otherwise, we become very, eh, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. But when we actually understand, wait a minute, let me get, this is something that even great, great personalities are finding difficult. I better not lose this chance. I better not lose that lifeline that has been given. So, that's how we are listening. Yeah, 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 it's actually, like here in Pakistan, we are developing some sort of fear in our mind. So, how we can stop that? It should not create fear, it should create uh, strength and faith to take advantage of the gift we have. Because we recognize that actually this is an extraordinary gift. Right? By hearing these things, we realize, I have something, at least here, I have no qualification for it, but for some reason it has been given to me, I better not lose it. Right? So instead of fear, make it a source of inspiration to take very seriously. Because to come in contact with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is no ordinary feat. Because Krishna himself came in Mahavadaya, the most merciful. Most merciful means he gave to the most unqualified the greatest gift. So now that we have it in our hands, what are we going to do with it? So seeing these things, don't become fearful. Become more convinced, I should take this seriously, like you all are, serving so nicely, going to the temple, making outfits, doing so much thing. Just continue. Chant the holy names of the Lord. Read Srimad Bhagavatam. And ultimately, surrender to Guru. Take initiation and serve the deities the rest of our life. So don't become fearful. Just become, after, wow, I have something great. I better not let it go. <laughs> Make sense? Thank you, sir. Hare. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Nanda Pati Vaishnava. How can you, Dhamma Rastaka, come at home and chant one round?